Next on Good Morning, El Paso breaking overnight. Two different fires on the east side, one forcing people to evacuate from their apartments. Our round the clock crew is on the scene. Also, a popular voter approved project is going to cost the city millions more. What caused that major miscalculation? And police say he's armed and dangerous. The search is on for a man accused of killing his ex wife and five of her relatives. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up so early with us today. I'm Hillary Florin. And I'm Stephanie Valle. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday. It's just after 6 o'clock. And it is a cold start to the day. Make sure that you bundle up if you're going outside right now. It sure is. We are feeling that difference of the temperature drop for the past few days. Crystal's got to look at our forecast for today. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yes, we are back in the 30s again. And that wind chill does not help feeling any warmer. Let's take a look at your temperatures. We're at 39 degrees outside in El Paso. It feels like 33 degrees. Reason for that, winds are at 8 miles per hour, which does make it feel cooler than it actually is. Our relative humidity is at 45% in El Paso. In Las Cruces, up to 65%. That's because of some of that upper level moisture, the clouds that have moved on in and are leaving us with a mix of partly cloudy to mostly clear sky conditions. 30 is your temperature in Las Cruces. Winds are calm there though, so good news is it does not feel any colder than it actually is outside. Coming up in right around 10 minutes from now, we're going to talk about chances of rain in the forecast as we track through the next few days and also those winds potentially picking up. That'll be in just a few minutes. Okay, Crystal, thank you. To our round the clock news right now, two fires broke out in a home and an apartment on the east side overnight. Yeah, our crew was at the scene of the two fires that happened around 10 o'clock. The first one was on the 11,000 block of Vistal Sol at the Lake Fairway Apartments in East El Paso. Andrew J. Polk is live right now from Vista del Sol with the very latest. Good morning, Andrew. What can you tell us? Well, I can tell you it's pretty quiet here right now, Hillary and Stephanie. There's not a lot of activity going on, but that's not the case earlier this morning when there was a lot of activity going on as firefighters responded to fire and smoke coming from one of these apartments right as people were going to sleep. Now, Chief Brad St. Meyer says that the apartment cause is, the apartment fire cause rather, is under investigation, but they do have a clue at least since smoke was seen coming out of the attic of the building. St. Myers says that it is safe for neighbors in adjacent apartments to return home, which they were able to earlier this morning. Now, the two occupants in the apartment that caught fire are getting assistance from the Red Cross this morning since they were not able to return to their apartment, but no one was injured. Uh, the occupants of the apartment had noticed, uh, heard a pop or something in the ceiling. Uh, we're looking at now a possibility of a, of a heater in the attic space, uh, but the investigation is ongoing. Now, fire crews also had to put out a house fire on the 3200 block of Vogue in East El Paso. According to fire dispatch, flames could be seen coming from the roof of the home. Two people were inside but made it out safely. No injuries were reported in the area. So it's a cold morning for people who have been forced out of their homes. But thankfully, no, nothing else going on here tonight or at the other scene, though the investigation still going on into the cause of those fires. will of course, have the latest on air and online at KVIA.com. So for now, reporting live on the side, Andrew J. Polk, ABC 7. Thanks so much, Andrew, for that live report. And now to breaking news out of Pakistan. At least 126 people are dead after Taliban gunmen stormed a school. Officials say the shooting began at random at the military-run school early this morning. Most of those killed are said to be children from grades 1 to 10. A Taliban spokesperson claimed responsibility for that attack in a phone call to media. The Pakistani military says five of the attackers are now dead. We now know the name of the man killed after he tried to rob a smoke shop. This happened Sunday night at the DCP's smoke shop in Las Cruces. Police say this man here, 24-year-old Luciano Acuna, was shot and killed in the attempted robbery. They say Acuna pointed a gun at a store employee and demanded cash. When Acuna was distracted, another employee grabbed a handgun and fired several rounds. We've learned Acuna had a past criminal history, including one arrest for another robbery. Police say the employees involved will not face any charges as they were protecting themselves. And twin sisters are recovering this morning after being hit by a truck. This also happened in Las Cruces on Picacho, west of Melendres Street. Police say around 4 yesterday afternoon, the 16 year old sisters were crossing at a crosswalk. And that's when an 81 year old driver of a Ford pickup failed to stop and hit both teams. Witnesses say the man got out of his truck momentarily and then drove off. 
He was stopped by police a few blocks later, and charges against him are pending. 20 more years in prison. That's how long a former Las Cruces police detective who raped a teenage intern has been sentenced to. Michael Garcia's new sentence will run concurrently with that federal sentence he's serving now. Garcia was supposed to get 30 years, but the judge suspended 10 years. Garcia will serve nine years in Massachusetts and will be brought back to a New Mexico facility to serve the rest. He is currently serving a nine-year sentence for the same offense. The victim, 17 years old, when she was sexually assaulted. She has since learned Garcia Garcia was HIV positive when he raped her. A 45-year-old Las Cruces man is in jail, accused of shooting at a man who was walking down an alley. Police say Robert Barnett fired a handgun at the man who hid behind a utility pole, pleading with Barnett to stop. The man ran off and called 911. Barnett is now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A Doniana woman credits her teenage son for saving her life after her boyfriend allegedly tried to drown her. The Doniana County Sheriff's Office says a 14-year-old called 911 when 40-year-old Anton Salopek allegedly tried to drown her in the tub. He, she was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. Salopek is charged with aggravated battery against a household member, causing great bodily harm and kidnapping. Happening right now, a manhunt is underway in Pennsylvania this morning. Police are looking for a 35-year-old former Marine suspected of gunning down his ex-wife and five members of her family. ABC's Susan Salney has been following the story and has the latest. Several small towns outside of Philadelphia remain on lockdown this morning after a shooting spree across several locations left six people dead, sparking a massive manhunt. On the loose, the suspect, 35-year-old former Marine Sergeant Bradley Stone, considered armed and dangerous. Police have confirmed that Stone had a family connection to all six victims. We do not know where he is. Uh, we, are, we do not have vehicle information. The deadly rampage began at 3.30 Monday morning when Stone allegedly went to a house in Souderton, Pennsylvania and killed his ex-wife's sister, her husband and their 14-year-old daughter. Their 17-year-old son was injured but survived. Next, authorities responded to a 911 call in nearby Lansdale and found two more bodies, Stone's former mother-in-law and grandmother-in-law. Police suspect he then went to his ex-wife's house in Lower Salford and shot her to death. I heard three or four gunshots and I heard the kids yelling, saying, Mommy, no, no. She was a sweet girl, took good care of her kids. Her mom was always over here helping her. Neighbors called 911 and reported seeing Stone taking his two daughters from the house in pajamas. He delivered the girls unharmed to a neighbor before fleeing. Now SWAT teams are searching a wooded area where Stone may be hiding as some businesses and schools stay closed for the day. The police are describing Stone as extremely dangerous and are asking the public to call 911 if anyone sees him. Susan Solney, ABC News, Washington. Well, speaking of manhunts, El Paso County Sheriffs need your help locating this man, a wanted sex offender who's been missing since August. This is 30-year-old Belisario Dominguez Martinez. The sheriff's office says he exposed himself to a 13-year-old girl, later serving time for it. He was released from jail in May and lived in Socorro. You can see his tattoos, which could help identify him. The photos and info on our Facebook page right now if you need to take another look. It is 6.08 and time to take a look at TechSoc traffic cameras looking over in far east El Paso County. Now far west El Paso County, you can see the traffic is pretty light. The skies are dark at this time. So just be careful if you're heading out on the roads. Well, kids looking forward to seeing dinosaurs next month are not going to be happy with this news this morning. We're sorry. Yeah, the show Walking with Dinosaurs has been canceled. We'll tell you when and how you can get your refund if you bought any tickets. And the Sun Bowl, less than two weeks away, believe it or not. What the two coaches of the teams had to say about each other. But first, Crystal Cly has your complete forecast, Crystal. And it is a good forecast today, but then in the days to come, we could see some rain and also the winds picking up. We'll talk all about that with your rain and wind casts after your break. This is ABC7, where news comes first.